May, uh, may I have a moment of silence, please, while I start singing Hooked on a Feeling? <laughs> Threats work. We have a special guest today. And uh, to introduce our special guest, we have Jonathan Angel from Hackers and Founders. That was a threat. I still might carry it out. The evening is still young. So Jonathan Angel from Hackers and Founders is going to introduce a very special guest. Hi everyone. Uh, I guess I'll have to do this. I'm the other tall gentleman who's with Hackers and Founders. I'm the CFO um, working with Jonathan. And tonight I want to introduce a very special guest, uh, Thomas Massey. He is a congressman. He, there's a lot of great things about him and I just found out actually that he'd started a company and uh, had gone in for funding and he will talk about that. Some neat facts about him are he's from Kentucky, he's here visiting us. He's gonna tell us some neat things about his house that he built with his own hands and is off the grid. And with that, let me introduce our Congressman. All right, so uh, where do I start? Um, I'm a libertarian leaning Republican. That's kind of, I'll start out with the politics of it. Libertarianism, uh, hopefully you're pretty much familiar with that in two sentences. Uh, as Matt Kibbe says from Freedom Works, don't hurt people and don't take their stuff. And that's pretty much what we believe in. And that goes for government too. You don't hurt people and you don't take their stuff. I didn't go to college to be a politician. I went to MIT, got an EECS degree, undergrad, then a uh, Mechie degree, grad school. Started a company in my dorm room there uh, with my wife. We moved it to married student housing. Uh, which was a big upgrade because we had uh, two rooms in married student housing. Then we moved it into an incubator space uh, near the MIT campus. The directions to get to our office were turn uh, left at the nuclear reactor, right at the gay bar, and left at the candy factory. And we were just only two blocks from MIT. Uh, we moved three times since then. We raised $32 million of venture capital. We did not go public. We didn't hit the big home run, but we did get to first or second base. Uh, I sold my ownership to the VCs. By the way, it's a virtual reality interface that I invented. You can feel three-dimensional objects by holding a stylus and moving around. We uh, raised a bunch of money, wrote some software for sculpting, computer-aided design. We sold it to toy companies, shoe companies, jewelry companies, and uh, that's what I did then. Uh, moved back to Kentucky, built a house that's off the grid. Uh, it's a timber frame house, so it's all held together with wooden pegs. There's no nails. I wanted to do it the hard way. Um, it's solar powered, so it has a 10 kilowatt array, um, and pretty much everything is off the grid there. Was just minding my own business, got ticked off at government, decided to run for office. I ran for a county office. I got in there, I found all sorts of waste, fraud, and abuse. Uh, uncovered that, made a lot of friends, not. Um, sort of built a reputation for, for that sort of thing. And then when our congressman resigned, I ran for office. So, um, And now I represent northern Kentucky, which is the area near Cincinnati, but it's in Kentucky, in uh, Kentucky. And uh, I'm on the, the Space Science and Technology Committee, the Transportation Committee, and the Oversight Committee. And uh, the one hack that I did at MIT, so hacking there also meant hardware as well as software. So. One of the hacks I did was we had electric or uh, mechanical blackboards that when the professor was done writing, he would send the board up to the top of the, of the uh, lecture hall because you know, these were 300 person lecture halls. So uh, we snuck in at night and I built a circuit and put it into the control mechanism for the boards. So at the same time every day for like two years, the blackboards would move. And of course this coincided with my class at the time. Uh, one, one interesting thing about that hack, it was great because the professor didn't know what was going on. He would write something, he would turn around, and the board would move. I couldn't stop it if I wanted to. So there were times when he was, he was leaning up against the boards, and I was wondering if it was going to break his arm or something as it came down. That never happened. But I woke up one morning on a Sunday and realized that daylight savings time had occurred. And... Um, uh, so I snuck back in, you know, you had to pick locks, go through the ceiling and the floor between two floors, drop down in a closet, 
fished the circuit back out through the itchy insulation and I changed the, the clock so that it would work next Monday when daylight savings time came. And of course, the, the, uh, the clocks at MIT, they hadn't even fixed those, so the ones on the wall were wrong. And the professor stopped about 30 seconds before the boards were supposed or would normally move. Uh, and he said, I guess you're all wondering what I'm wondering. Did the boards take into account daylight savings time? Yeah. <laughs> and so the, the whole class stopped for 30 seconds. And then when the boards started moving, it was just, they erupted in roar of clapping and laughter. <laughs> so it was worth sticking my arm back in that itchy, itchy insulation to get that circuit back out. But anyways, um, that's about it. I'm in Congress now. It's messed up. It's really screwed up. Um, it's worse than you think. And <laughs> I don't know what else to tell you. So I'll leave it at that. I know every, uh, there are other people that want to speak. And maybe um, I can talk to you later if you have questions or anything. But thanks for having me today. Congressman Macy, and because you went to MIT and um, seemed to understand technology, we will not heckle you this time around, sir. <laughs> Next up, we have Steve, who is a technology blogger from China, and uh, he's setting up a Chinese gadget display at Hacker Dojo. Thank you, Sophie. Um, yeah, hi, everybody. I'm Steve Wang from uh, Leifeng a Chinese tech blog based in Shenzhen, and uh, we focus on uh, smart hardware. So uh, this Monday, we, I and my colleague Yu Meng, now here, uh, we moved into Hack Dojo to set up our uh, Silicon Valley office. And we also launched uh, our new project called uh, Chinese Gadget Corner, just over there in, in, in the hive. So you may, you may say that. So um, basically, it is a show place for Chinese gadgets, for Chinese smart hardware. We want to create a simple way for um, Silicon Valley people, for tech fans, for hardware developers, for uh, tech reporters, for investors to explore uh, and play with the Chinese gadgets, the gadgets made, made and designed in China. Um, you know, here you can find some gadgets, some hardware like, you know, uh, wristband, like smart bomb, smart lights, smart, um, routers and uh, uh, TV set up box and also some smaller gadgets. Some are from big names like Xiaomi, like Baidu, and some are from uh, uh, like uh, Chinese startups. So, uh, you know, many Chinese gadgets do not have, um, do not have English apps or instructions, but we can help you to understand these things. So about gadgets like this one, you may, know that uh, Google Cardboard and this is made in Shenzhen. So uh, it enables people to turn, turn your smartphone into a, a VR headset. You can watch your uh, watch vi virtual reality videos and play virtual reality games. Just plug your smartphone into this headset. And you know, these kit on Amazon, most of them are around the $20. And, uh, last week, due to case, a San Francisco-based uh, startup who made iPad cases for President Obama demo their uh, own wear the, the recovery kit here in Hack Dojo. So I asked them a question, do you think it is a little bit expensive? And, and then people laughed. But to me, it is really expensive because, you know, this kit made in Shenzhen is only $3. And the performance is, it, it, it seems like it's also very good. So another example of our gadgets like, like this one. Um, it is, you, you may hear of uh, Prezi, and it looks like Prezi. Um, some people may think it is a copycat of Prezi, but I think it is more, it is easier to use. Then you just plug into the smartphone, and yeah, uh, you press it. And then one picture, has been taken. And then you press it twice. And you may receive a fake phone call. So if you want to end a conversation <laughs> on a party <laughs> with somebody you don't want to talk to anymore, so you, you can use that. And you know, this is only less than one dollar. 
So it is made by uh, Qihu, also a 10 billion company uh, in China. So uh, if you are interested in Chinese gadgets, if you want to play with these things, you want to uh, find out the UI, their apps, uh, their design, if you want to know more about Chinese hardware industry, yeah, please feel free to drop in and uh, we will try to answer all of your questions and help you to understand the, the hardware industry, also the manufacturing resources in China. Uh, besides, I'm also a reporter, uh, a tech writer, uh, focusing on smart hardware industry. So I came to Silicon Valley this March and I have uh, I wrote a lot of articles about uh, the Silicon Valley smart hardware teams, like you know, Pebbles, like yeah, the, the <laughs> Robert Terra, and also the Misfit, also Indiegogo, these things. And uh, yeah, so if you have stories, you have interesting gadgets, if you want to be covered by uh, Chinese press, <laughs> so you can come to me and uh, we may schedule. Uh, we may schedule an interview with you and um, then I write an article for you to post it to Lei Feng and uh, for our Chinese readers. Um, so we, we hope you can support us by sharing the information of this place with your friends who may be interested in uh, Chinese gadgets uh, by you know, liking our Facebook account or you can just uh, share photos on your own Facebook account, Twitter account, Instagram, LinkedIn, and uh, you may also just uh, tell your friend about this place and invite them to come here. So as a, as a part of Hacker Dojo, we're also considering to uh, offer some benefits to Hacker Dojo members, maybe uh, lend some gadgets uh, to hack dojo members only, but so we first of all we need to improve it. We need to get more gadget, cooler gadget from China. So next month you will see more cooler things here. So thank you. Thank you. Trucks. We have another. Uh, we have Jesse, who is also working on something truck related. His is a IoT app which lets uh, businesses monitor cargo and check out the temperature of the trucks. You all know Joe, Jesse, uh, he is the gentleman who taught us how to give lightning talks the first or the second session? The second session. Thanks, Jesse. Thank you. All right, um, I unplugged this, so I hope this will be quick. I've got to get everything to, there it is. All right, and let me apply this. Yeah, it's good. Thank you for that. And usually I drag and drop this right over where it goes. There we go. Um, and since I can't see it, I'm going to have fun with this. I may hit that and not even know that. And I've got to hit this button or otherwise it's going to go back to the way it was. All right. Thank you very much for your patience. My name is Jesse Monroy. And uh, I've done a lot of things in my life, but recently a, uh, uh, somebody came to me at a hackathon and they gave me one of these things. And it measures the temperature of truck trailers. And if you ship produce or any kind of food, it measures this and they measure the, this and then when you're done they take it out and it's a one-time use, it's 20 bucks. And I was astonished to know about this thing. So I found a nice replacement. Where my friend John Brewer is not here today, who lent me this. This is a Texas Instruments sensor tag. It is $25. It's BLE capable, Bluetooth, low energy. So off we go to the mission. So from my notes here, 40% uh, of the food grown in the ground never makes it to human. We do not eat that. So 40% is just thrown away. Last year in 2013, we lost $35 billion in food. That is wasted across five different sectors. Farm, transport, processing, distribution, and of course the consumer. Now, what does that look like? That's a terrible problem, but we're gonna attack it at the transport level, okay? Oh, hello. <laughs> I know what happened. It doesn't have a focus, and there it is. All right, this is the overview of the industry right here. Um, it is, um, 
Thank you. <laughs> All right. Uh, it, the uh, transport industry is broken into four different sectors, and the largest is the trucking industry. It takes in 81% of all the money for transportation. So that's where I'm going. I'm going to the transportation sector. That's where the, most of the money is. Um, trucking is fragmented, but you'll be happy to know that the small businessman, he's six trucks or less, that's 90% of the industry. And there's over one million truckers right now in the United States, more than one million. I know that that's the case. And I've talked to quite a few of them. It's an interesting thing. They don't make a lot of money. Uh, currently, if you want technology solution, it's very expensive. The most expensive is satellite communication. You're talking about $5,000 a month on average that they have to spend. So there's lots, of, there's lots of solution out there, but a lot of them are very expensive. I'm going to make mine inexpensive. So there it is. Um, as you can see, there's a cloud up there. That's where we're going to ship up the data. And you'll see what, hopefully, yes, the thing. So we know about the Internet of Things. A lot of times we don't know what it is, and I'm just like drawing my picture of my thing, the thing that I'm going to make. Some of you may be familiar with the Raspberry Pi, and of course I just mentioned the Texas Instruments sensor tag. So what it's going to do is it's going to send that information from the truck over there, and it's going to send it up to the cloud, and we're going to have that information publicly available for the world to see. Okay? And that's going to help because we're going to be able to tell from the farm all the way to the fork uh, where your food came from, where it went through, what distribution points, and what the temperature was all along the way. So you're going to have better quality food, and we're going to have less waste as this runs along. Go to the next slide here. All right, so again, I'm providing that data for people to use and see so you have assurance of the product that you're buying. And I also want to make some goals here because I don't know if it's very successful. So my measure is that the, the price of food gets cut in half. I know I'm succeeding. And I want to eliminate the term morbid obesity. I think if that term is eliminated from our lexicon, I will have succeeded. And that's it for now. Any questions? Oh, one last thing. I'm sorry. I need helpers in this. So those are the three sectors, storage, analysts, analytics, and publications. I'm going to make sure that's freely available to everybody and they can do it as well. Somebody had a question. Yes? You mentioned that the TI chip has got a low energy Bluetooth in it. That's now, correct. Does that mean it has to pair some other transmitter to actually send to the cloud, or is that So the question is about the Bluetooth low energy. Uh, it does not need to pair with anything, but of course it's going to need to pair with the, the computer, the Raspberry Pi, and the Raspberry Pi will transmit that via cell phone or whatever communication method it has up to the cloud. Any other questions here right now? All right, yes sir in the front. So, you got a truck that's 60 something feet long. Uh, trucks are 53, 53 feet long. Okay. Yes sir. So, you'll have to put a few of these in there? And that's correct. And how do you power them? Okay, again, uh, the question is how do you power these little guys here? Oh, no, I'm talking about the data collection. The data collection, okay. The data collection. So these things right here in my hand, these are powered by watch batteries. And the computer that's powered there, it it's essentially is a cell phone or a tablet. And if that's not enough power, there is 12 volts available on the truck. It's part of the standard cam system that comes on the truck, so it's not going to be a big issue. I do have to make a few wiring modifications, but nothing big. Anybody else? Happy for questions? Anybody? How much does it cost that production or at scale? Um, my bill of materials right now is around $500. I'm looking to get it down to $200, and I think the retail price will be uh, starting out $5,000, but I'm looking to get it down to $1,000 per truck within two years. Yes, sir? Other than being a less expensive option than what currently exists, how is this going to prevent uh, us losing food from spoiling? Okay, losing food from spoiling is the question. How is this going to help prevent it? It's not going to. So, you know, um, we would hope that we have all sorts of automatic techniques in the world, but I want to make sure that I'm very clear on this point. I build technology to assist humans, not replace them. That's one of my goals. It's not stated up there because I didn't want to put it up there. So I'm hoping other people will take the same channel as I have here. Assist humans, don't replace them. And that my time is up, and I thank everybody for the time. My name again is Jesse Monroe.
you, Jesse. Uh, speaking of food, we have hackers and founders to thank for the pizza. And uh, thank you, Hacker Dojo, for the beer. <coughs> Did you guys enjoy the evening? Yes. yes. Okay. Go on and have a